Hey there, boys and girls. Welcome to this next installment of Not Bravo Hollow Weekly 700 Scariest Horror Movie Moments 2008-ish <laughs> to now. Yes. <laughs> That's what we've decided. There's a that, few 2006 films we had to eliminate. Yeah. And and I'm actually excited because I think there's some newer films on here, but you're starting a little further back, I think. I, this movie mystified me. The one you're about to say, I can't. I couldn't believe when you told me what year it was. I thought it was way earlier than, the, than it turns out to be. I did too. In fact, what, there was one movie that oh, we had Silent Hill on there today, and I was like, okay, because we're ma- we're moving stuff around as we go. We're mm-hmm. moving stuff around as we go. Mm-hmm. And Silent Hill they made the cut, but we do have a film from not too far after that, 2008, with number. I got to do the Bravo. <laughs> the dung down. <laughs> The <laughs> snakes and snails and big monster tails. <laughs> That's what they would have done for that. That's what they would have done for that. Coming in at uh, number 80, I'm going with Cloverfield. Yes. All right. It's Cloverfield. You haven't seen it? Giant monster movie. Indeed. Big, big monster terrorizes in New York. It's about all you need to know. Right. One of the first shaky cam. Monster movies. Yep. Shaky cam monster movies. Mm-hmm. Um, when did Troll Hunter come out? Because that's a giant shaky cami yeah, monster. Yeah, I mean, I mean, like, monster movie. <laughs> four people have seen that. It's very true. Very true. Okay, so Giant Monster Attacks in New York City. It's really, really great. Directed by Matt Reeves, 2008. Mm-hmm. Produced by J.J. Abrams. The movie everyone thought was Godzilla. It wasn't, but it was just as amazing. And a sneaky good horror franchise in general. That you is forget true. forget because they're not really that connected. That it's sort of a franchise? Yeah. I think the one, the second one, they kind of... No, was it the second no, one? No, no. Cloverfield Paradox is the one you're... Is ever, that the one that they just like randomly were like, by the way, is it Cloverfield related? Yeah. Well, yeah. It's the space one. So, although there's a, there's a couple of good scares in there. There's but, a giant monster. But 10 there. Cloverfield Lane is the... is is I mean, there are very few horror franchises where two movies are equally as good and they're both on a really high level. And I consider both of those like really good at a high level. The scene I'm going with for scariest movie moment, I got to go with the bridge scene. Where yep. the bri- everyone's running. So to set it up for you, basically, homeboy, homeboy is leaving. They're throwing a big going away party, right? And then all of a sudden they hear a bunch of explosions and shit like that. And they go outside, they go to visit it. They start to evacuate. And this is the bridge scene where you first get your the the, the sense of how big the monster is going to be. And I remember, like, we were rewatching it just before recording this, and like, I remember how I felt because, like, I ate, the, like, I you know, I've talked about it on the show multiple times, like, yep. I ate up the marketing. Like, there was yep. one of like a oil tanker spilling over in the ocean, and then there was like this weird drawing of like a whale that everyone was like, "This is it," and I was like, "That's a big fucking monster." It wasn't it? And so I just remember sitting there like opening night, and when the thing. So they're, they're all trying to escape the city. They're all leaving on the bridge. So the bridge is just jam-packed full of cars and people trying to get over. Chaos. Chaos, 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 chaos. And then the boy, boy, one of the girl's boyfriends is, you know, a couple a couple feet ahead of him. And he gets up on the light going, like, hey, where are you guys at? And I didn't even, you know what's funny? Accurate line reading. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> There's a giant monster. Cut yeah. the cut the yik yeah, yeah, right. But it's funny, rewatching it, I didn't notice, like, seconds before everything happens, when the tail's coming up, you see the water drip on him. And it's a detail, like, for some reason, however many times I've seen this movie, I've just never noticed it. It's such a good little touch. I've just never noticed it. Anyways, giant tail comes up, smacks the bridge in New York City, and chaos ensues. And it still holds up. Yep. It's, yeah, it's super effective, and it's also, it's, it's weird to hit that sweet spot of iconic and not. Yeah. Right? Yeah, like, yeah. because the Cloverfield monster is not. Like I, you don't see people walking around with Cloverfield monster shirts and whatnot now. I had a Cloverfield shirt, and I still to this day don't know where it went. <laughs> right, because but the, I like that it's smudgy. Yeah. I like that it's iconic, but also not iconic. It's more city iconic and less monster iconic. But the monster design is amazing, so it doesn't make any. Well, I feel sense. like the more iconic shot in Cloverfield is when the monster like looks down and like you see like a like an rpg hit it and like when it's crawling over the city and you get your first like sort of head-to-head view of it like that's more of an iconic shot but this shot i feel like has more of like this like you're so fucked feeling right and it's i don't know i just well and it also does the spielberg jaws principle of don't show too much until you have to so it's like a perfect 
because what you see of the monster is scary, but you don't see. I a still lot. remember what <laughs> I was anticipating on seeing of what came next after, like that movie. Like that scene had yep. such an imprint yep. on me. And the other argument for this movie would be: this movie is retroactively shaming 2014 or 15 Godzilla. Godzilla, King of Monsters, like a yeah. bunch of those movies, and nothing but Kong Skull Island really is as good as yeah. this. Even though they came later with really talented teams and huge budgets and iconic monsters, like they still did not do it. I mean, you can't even see 2014 or 15's Godzilla, whatever year that was. It's as dark as the timer on your phone's about to go, <laughs> <laughs> right? And Cloverfield managed to be like portrayed from a shittier camera but still more visible than than what we see now well I, I i didn't realize like first of all doing all that shit handheld and then trying to put effects in there's like even in like 2008 it had to be like mad hard but even the sound effects of like the wire snapping on the bridge yeah. like it just sounds strong and powerful and like just like these things that shouldn't be collapsing are all falling around you at the same time and i just love that chaos totally Trans transition and, and also I love that we're mainly doing transition this is a stripped down <laughs> production here but also I realized that our block of 10 this 80 to 71 we're about to do narrowly escaped having multiple bridge scenes on it we'll get to that in a minute <laughs> but, wow. but okay so and we weren't even coordinating it just sort of happened That's all crazy. right So coming in at 79. 79, I have brought you, dear listeners, a gift today. The gift is I found an amazing short film hiding inside a completely terrible larger film, <laughs> like a complete legitimate masterpiece just resting inside there that you probably haven't seen and probably don't know about. Mm -hmm. It's Hold the Dark, which was released on Netflix. It's the director of Green Room and Blue Ruin, an incredibly talented director. And and Hold the Dark is to me is hilariously bad, which is mm -hmm. unexpected from this a director this talented. But I use bad with a caveat. Like there are really great visuals, really great great character notes. There's actually some scary stuff in here. So I, I'm not like attacking this movie, but like the level of the scene that I'm about to tell you is so the shootout scene, do yourself a favor. If you haven't seen this movie, fast forward until you see two people having a very civilized ish tense conversation at a doorway and police behind them and then just press play and just enjoy the next seven minutes of your life because the <laughs> scene is incredible on so many different levels. It's incredibly acted. It's incredibly scary. It's a short film in itself. Like it literally has a beginning, middle and an end. There's character arcs that happen in this one. There's gore. There's amazing moments. So like Nick and I just watched the scene. There's this incredible moment mid shootout where there's two police officers sheltering behind a rock and the police officers like doing the thing you do like saving private ride style he's like mm -hmm. signaling to him and then he's like whispering to him he's like i'm gonna run around here when i go here you shoot at that window cover me and don't stop whatever he goes all right he goes i'm gonna i'll signal you three two one and i go and, and use your magazine full and your pistol and the cop's like uh, yes and he's like please check <laughs> so there's just this moment of watching this guy like prove to the officer next the to him one. that he's <laughs> <laughs> He's got bullets, like which has to happen all the time in real shootouts, but you never see portrayed in it. But it's 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 actually an incredible, um, I, I dare say, philo philosophical things happening in this scene because it starts with the villain or not villain, actually, but it starts with the the character who's going to be the killer telling the police officer in, in mid conversation, "Your wife's going to get a call. She's going to get a call if you mess with me." You don't want her to get that call. And it, that that call, the idea of the call hangs over the whole scene and literally ends with that, where where it's like a callback to that callback, pun intended, <laughs> callback to that moment. And it's terrifying. It's a terrifying, like there's a abstract notion that hangs over the scene that makes it super scary. And the gore is so realistic. You feel like you just witnessed right outside the your gore window. It's really a blink and you miss it type of gore like there's one dude who gets shot in the cheek and like you just see like all of his like teeth <laughs> like, his oh, yeah. skin just flaps away <laughs> it's like an anatomy thing. what's really funny about scenes like that is like there's like I, I think of it as like the saving private ryan scale because mm -hmm. like that's like the perfect like yep. 10 out of 10 nailed it and i'm trying to think of like what would be like a zero out of 10 anyways it has it has like the intensity of saving private ryan but it also kind of reminded me of michael Mann's heat a little bit 
It did. And the thing that I'm about to tell you is going to blow your mind because this movie is a werewolf movie. Huh? <laughs> you just watched a werewolf movie. That's This is a werewolf film. Save, save and private save, werewolf? <laughs> save and private dog soldiers. <laughs> like, it is? The, yes. Indeed it is. That that's why it's on this list. <laughs> wow. <laughs> right. So anyway, this this scene, the intensity of the the person with the machine gun, the this this frightening, like just casual you hear that phrase zero fucks. This is the the if you this is the perfect distillation distillation of zero fucks. Like this character has zero fucks to give about losing well, his life, part. like damaging people, ruining their lives. Like it's p- inflicting pain. It's incredible. My favorite part was the uh, who's the guy from uh, Westworld who's in Jeffrey it? Wright. Jeffrey Wright. Mm-hmm. He like uh, the one guy gets like nicked in the neck. And he's bleeding, and he puts his hand over it, and all of a sudden you see like three bullets hit his leg, and like what the chest, and he's like, <laughs> "Never mind." He's like, he goes, oh, fuck. No, "It's fucking." No, toast. I was gonna call for medic, but never mind. <laughs> no, that that's a that's a good scene. Best werewolf shootout movie I've ever. Best werewolf shootout. Yeah, it's an incredible werewolf shootout scene. Damn, <laughs> I didn't expect that little short film and a bad film. I like that. That was a good little twist. I like to bring people because there's the odds of you being a horror fan and having seen this have got to be pretty pretty small. But I feel like a lot of people have seen Green Room. Yes, indeed. Hmm. All right. Well, shootouts. Trans- Fuck yeah, transition. All right. Coming in at number, number 78. Our second M. Night film. Right. I wonder how many directors are going to appear multiple times on our list. Because I... we have one big hitter who's only appearing once later on. Yes. But I happen to know that there are a few that we're covering now yeah, yeah. <laughs> that might be part of that equation that is true that is true okay so m night if it, if we did the visit then that means split has to be up next and it's interesting that m night i don't know how i feel about this because i feel like I, you know it, it's it's exciting that m night has been two entries in our 100 countdown for like the last basically 15 years mm-hmm. but um also, there, he's way up high at the list. Like, once upon a time, you would have expected M. Night to be top 10 on a mm-hmm. list like this. And then he fell apart, and then he came back. So now he's... I, I'm glad we waited. <laughs> if we had done it, like, 2008 <laughs> to 2010, we would have been, like, it would have been, like, devil. Right. Yeah. <laughs> that would have sucked. Would know, would know, right? It was like, um, so I'm not going to go with any of the scenes you guys are thinking I'm going to go with. I like that you're pulling a surprise. So here. it's not going to be the end with the beast when he's crawling on the walls and he's busting out the light balls, which is actually really cool. Yep. I almost went with the opening scene when he uh, kills the, the father. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. When he kills the father right. and he gets in the car and they look at him and then he like, you know, maces him or sprays him, yep. whatever. Because that's a shocking scene. I'm actually going to go with the therapist scene. Yep. Where James McAvoy is just, like switching character to character like right in front of your face. Because it is one of the most unsettling, but... Best, I mean, that's probably. I've had to look at the rest of the list. Probably the best acting. There on isn't this better list. acting on our list than this. Like, that was like, that's it. There might be equal, but there's not better. Like, James McAvoy crushed it in that. And movie. the therapist. Oh, she she brings great. the heat. She's, she was, she's good too. She was fantastic. Okay, so if you haven't seen Split or Glass, right? Was there a third one or was there just a two, right? No, it's Unbreakable. Oh, yeah, Unbreakable. Unbreakable is the first one. Right. Okay, so if you haven't seen Split, Basically, James, it's, um, James McAvoy's master class in acting. <laughs> right, yes, he, he plays he plays yes. a guy with multiple personalities. <laughs> he kidnaps these three women, holds them underground, and then just keeps switching for personalities. And it's like one of those. It's really creepy because you don't know who he's going to be, and he has personalities. I think he has like so, oh, like seven to thirteen personalities or something like that. Yeah, it's definitely double digits. I think. Um, and you only see like a handful of them, but like one of them's really flamboyant. One of them's uh, like a little kid. One of them's like a really stern dad. And there's a whole mechanism to it. They talk in groups. They they share share the light. Like they have mm-hmm. a whole pr- process. They have a whole they have a whole process. And the scene where he goes to talk to the therapist and he's switching in and out of them is just like it's unreal. Like. You shouldn't be that good at acting. Like, unless you're like Doug Jones, like you've sat through like 15 hours of prosthetics makeup, there's no reason you should be able to be that good at looking that different in totally. a heartbeat. Yep. In a heartbeat. Um, I just, I just, and what's funny is, is the the way he does it. So the first, I forget the name. Well, of, and he's like our Jekyll and Hyde. 
I mean, how yeah. cool is that? <laughs> yeah, but instead of doing like they did in the uh, what was it, the old version where like they just put like a colored filter over it and like they had like different colored <laughs> right. makeups on there. Like, well, just... John Barrymore, one of the big actors, tried like did it manually, like you're talking about in the scene, and it's pretty amazing. That's why this is so like cool. To it me. just it just plays so well, and so he's I forget the name of the 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 character who's like the the, the one who works at the zoo, but he has like a lisp, and he's you know he's very. Uh, uh, what's the word for it? Like uh, flamboyant is yep. it like he's very flamboyant, and then he he goes to like the very stern dad. Yeah. But all he does is he goes from like you know kind of staring off into the distance to just he sits up straight and just kind of like furrows it, furrows his brows at the right. Yeah, he just mm-hmm. kind of gets it like one of these and like puckers his lips a little bit and then he starts going. Well, yeah, you know we're in charge of all of this, <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> this stuff here, right? And it's the most unsettling scene. It's greatly acted. The best acting on this list. Yeah, it's 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 enervating to realize that that you know people go through that and and so I lived at, in a townhouse complex once upon a time and they, there was a round table in the middle of it, open air patio, and sometimes everyone would like group like block party or whatever, mm-hmm. like you know. And I imagine sitting in that table because the people who filled up this apartment complex were such different personalities. Some were super laid back, some were super tense, and you know like whatever. But imagine sitting at that table and having a camera at the front and the camera just swings around and you drop something controversial, like a fact, like everyone should wear masks or whatever. And imagine swinging the camera around and picking up everyone's faces where some people are like, yeah, some people are like, you're full of shit. And some people, whatever. And taking all those faces and doing all those facial expressions all at once as one person. Because that's what he does in it's, this scene. And that's terrifying that he can do that. It is I mean, rewatching it for this, like I was just like, God damn. Like it's it's so good. Yep. It, it gives so you good. chills, which is like exactly. And I don't know if the list. last one was any good. Never saw the last one. It was not. <laughs> well, we'll leave it at split. Transition. <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, so I'm doing a a movie from 2013, The Arrival of a sneaky body horror director. I don't think horror fans really have caught this, but we were examining his work, and it turns out he likes wow. degloving people. He likes taking all their features away from their faces. Mm. He likes. There's a lot of body mm. transformation things sneaking in here. Um, 2013's Oculus from arriving horror master director Mike Flanagan. Um, who hadn't dropped Hill House or Bly Manor, Bly Manor or just like, like Friday, <laughs> right? A lot of stuff on us, but uh, you could see it all in Oculus. Oculus should have been a movie I hated. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I felt generic. It felt gimmicky. Before I even like came to it, I was like, "This movie it should be terrible." Like it, yeah. and it was incredible. I really liked this movie, and it got even better for me as time went by. So the scene I'm picking is the. The mirror death scene is pretty good and intense, but I got to go with the Apple light bulb scene. This scene is, mouth hurt. is so it's scary and gross and hard to look at. And I like this. I like horror scenes that so, so there's a lot of horror directors that just blast you and it's all out. And sometimes I appreciate that. They're just mm-hmm. coming at you. They're grabbing you by the throat and they're like, we're going to we're, we're going to scare you by just blowing up everything up in front of your face, make a super gory look whatever. There's some of them who want to like make you participate. And I feel like that's what he did here because as soon as you hear the crunch, cause she picks up a light bulb instead of an apple and, she, and it's because her mind is being messed with. And she goes, she takes a bite out of it and you hear, you hear it before you see it. And as soon as you hear it, you know what's happening. And then you have to think through, what is about what you're about to see <laughs> right so like and what that would feel like if it was you that it was happening to and all of that is you're participating fully in your own terror in the in a scene that's constructed like this it's just a master class of, for some reason like growing up with like a brother and two sisters when we were young i remember us breaking light bulbs a lot and stepping on them sure somehow of like you know you're playing yeah. and something breaks of course and i always remember like it's such a weird pain stepping on like like sh- like sharp glass it's a weird pain like it's different than anything else it's even if you got cut by other things it's different like right. it's, like it's, it's 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 annoying and it has like a it's so weird i'm like <laughs> stepping on glass and getting cut by like light bulbs mm-hmm. has a certain flavor not in taste but like in no the way you're absolutely feels. right i i was literally gonna say because one of the things i think is amazing about this is 
when the when when you cut yourself when she cuts herself with the light bulb, I remember thinking I felt a little betrayed. Like you're supposed to be the good glass. Yeah, <laughs> you're supposed to be the glass that gives us light and never cuts us. You're mm-hmm. supposed to be like who cuts themselves on light bulbs. You feel a little betrayed and. It, and the funny thing is, this movie is about a killer mirror, basically. So glass, like evil glass, like, right? Like made a little cameo, like a different kind <laughs> like of glass, brother. like a right, right, like a raptor to the T Rex. They just show up, and they're it like, works. Oh. yeah. So I, all of that is absolutely amazing. I, I, I can't. It's one of those scenes that sticks with you forever. Well, even the way it's acted, it. like when yeah, when it finally shows like the front of her face. front of her face, and she's holding her mouth open, and like. Those She's got to go in there and extract the glass. But the fact that her mouth's also full of blood, and you can hear her go, oh, 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 and then it just pulls out that huge chunk of glass. <laughs> I'm like, oh my god, yeah, that hates. It's, it's it's one of like life made me gag, right with the choking yep, scene. Yep. This scene, watching it just before we recorded, like I had to hold my mouth open. Yeah, like I had to like mimic like. Like what she yeah. was doing, because I was like, I felt like I just chew, like the sound right. effect, and it's gonna oh. be like a year before you eat an apple, <laughs> dude. Probably not. I love apples, but no one believes me. But I'll never eat a, I'll never eat a light bulb, <laughs> and that's the Nick Rollins guarantee. I'll never, I will never do that. But you are right about the body horror thing with Mike Flanagan, because even in, um, like we just finished Blind Manor, mm-hmm. everyone's face goes away yeah. when their memories. Go out. Yeah, it's it's uh, it, well, and you know, let's let's be honest. Like when you have characters like the bent neck lady, like mm-hmm. it's in the name. <laughs> There's yeah. some body horror. Like it, it, I mean, I I think that it's weird because he's not upfront about it, so it's not like it didn't become like the Cronenberg or even the John Carpenter kind of noticeable thing. Mm-hmm. But he's doing it a lot. It's like a subliminal trick of his, which I really appreciate. And I like it because there's no other real body horror. Well. Cronenberg's son now. Is, That's true. We gotta check that we out. We gotta see his new movie. I'm excited for that. All right, transition. Coming in at number 76. I feel like that's a real sweet spot for this movie. Yes. This movie wasn't gonna be like the 30s because we keep talking about how like we keep feel like this list. You know, some people are like, "This isn't scary than that. This isn't scary that." that I get that. We look at this as more of like a gradient. Has of anyone horror. done that? I haven't seen that yet. No, but they will. <laughs> I'm manifesting that someone gets r- you, riled. You're saying that you've seen this attached to these movies in our group before. So I just know how okay. they act. All right. Uh, Drag Me to Hell. Indeed. Sam Raimi's only appearance in this list, which yeah. is a real shame. I mean, he's producing like a motherfucker, sure. but like, come on, man. Like, you know <laughs> how to make, you know what I'm saying? Like, come on. Yeah. Uh, there's a list of directors that like we're gonna have to like try to convince to make horror movies again, like Steven Spielberg to make something scary again, Tim Burton to come back. Right. We got a lot. Now Sam Raimi's well, he's gonna do Doctor Strange. I bet that'll be have some scary stuff in it. But anyways, I'm gonna go with the ending. Um, I, it was a, it was a toss up between the like attack at the bedroom when you know she throws up all the bugs mm-hmm. down her mouth because that's real disgusting. And the behind the scenes of that is like also like a blast to watch. <laughs> yeah, totally. I love that. But I gotta go with the ending just because it's the staple and she gets dragged to hell. <laughs> so, I mean, that's I kind mean, of goddamn you, awful. Yeah, you can't accuse this movie of not paying off its title. Justin Long is a really good actor too. I feel like he did like Jeepers Creepers, which we don't really talk about because I got right. Um, he's like really and fantastic. Tusk, right? Yeah, and Tusk, yeah. like, like there's some like really good shit in here and. Drag Me to Hell is the one film that's like, I think it's like 75-25% divisive in the horror community. Yeah. At least from like what we've seen yep. of in our group and our stuff like there. It's either, some people think it's scary and some people think it's a masterpiece. Yep. I'm on the masterpiece side. And I think this ending is just like perfect. Yeah, the ending is one of those, I mean, you can say whatever you want about like not scary or like whatever, but... That to me, that ending is one of the few iconic. Like, if you were doing a horror montage at like the Oscars mm. for mm-hmm. the years 2000 to 2020, I mean, this that scene is in there. Like, you're gonna see this mo- this moment in there because it's oh. it's literally such an iconic visual, right? And it has that monkey's paw like like urban myth, urban legend payoff feel to it. And just because it's, it's on a button, it, it, the whole thing turns on a button. Well, I, that's that that is my my favorite part. Just how 
he just nonchalantly goes, oh yeah, well I have this thing for you. And it, then it does my favorite, favorite Sam Raimi touch is the chop zooms mm-hmm. where the camera just whoosh. Mm-hmm. I love that. We actually did a, um, a short film for, I forget what it was. Oh yeah, our roommate hat was doing like a bunch of horror shorts. She was like, do you want to make one? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so then I kept doing the same Raimi chop zooms and they're like, you get one. And I'm like, no, nah, <laughs> everything needs to be a chop zoom. It looks fan- it looks fantastic. Yeah, it does. But the, but the shot of uh, getting dragged to hell is what, that's my favorite part is 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 at the very very end when the eyes just <laughs> bulge out yeah like it's like indiana jones like style where the nazis melt looking yeah and it's it is and it's super it's super unsettling and you know we had talked about this last week that some f- horror films you either end where the hero gets away and the day is saved or you end on like a really dark or i keep calling it like the ari aster moment where it's right. just like where it's just like the fuck you and I, you know what's funny is I'm going to actually correct myself. I, I thought there was no in-between. But I think Drag Me to Hell is the in-between, where you get the darkness. You get that, you get that fuck you. You know, she, this is not a good ending for, for, for her. You should have just given the gypsy the loan. Um, but, it's also, but it's also got that, that Sam Raimi camp feel to it. Right. Where, where it's, it's, you know, Creepshow was like the most fun you'll have being scared. Mm-hmm. I felt like that is like the embodiment of that. Yeah, right. And I also think that you you can definitely feel that the visuals were so important to that movie, right? Like mm-hmm. a lot of the like like which is, you know, pretty true for most Sam Raimi's work, right? But like how would you trade out some of those visuals even if you were trying to put in some scarier stuff or whatever? Like I That's all awesome. the I love the visual like the whole banks, oh, the whole sequence, that part is amazing. Mm-hmm. The, the room attack is amazing. These are just visuals you wouldn't want to give up for for anything. No, and then uh, was it his old yellow car, whatever he called it, the mm-hmm. old, the old whatever, <laughs> keeps makes it into this one. Good to oh, She just needs to make a movie. All right, transition. All right, I am torn here because I'm going with 2011's Final Destination Five. The First of all, one of the pound for pound highest quality modern franchises, right? Like mm-hmm. only one bad movie in the bunch, um, which is really good odds. <laughs> I'm trying to I'm trying to think of another franchise that ripped off four amazing movies in, in basically in a row, which is hard mm-hmm. to so. Um, but I'm torn because I want to do the bridge scene, like we were hinting at earlier. Yeah that this list could have had multiple bridge scenes on it. But I'm going to go with the gymnastics scene. Oh, that's what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it is the best death in this franchise. And that's saying a lot for a franchise this good. I, I just think everything about the way this death goes down. And by the way, the end of Final Five, where it tricks you and shifts you into a place you didn't expect to go. Mm-hmm. And I don't know how they pulled that off this late in the game in the internet world. I mean, 2011, th- that was a massive spoiler to, to pull off and not, because it surprised almost everyone. Like right. you would never do that now. You could never release this now and have that. Not, I mean, everyone would know before they're going to see the movie, but so the, it, cause that's really effective too. But the gymnastics scene <laughs> toys with you on so many different levels. And I think that's the scariest part of this is, is, Imagine so death is scary, but death with a sense of humor is scarier. Yeah. <laughs> right? Like this is a sick, twisted way. Like and it's almost like watching I, I, I imagine the way it would be like a man eating like a Bengal tiger, like just toying with its prey. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, like the electric to water conduit and she just throws her towel down on it. The iconic, unbelievable screw falls, like you said, sticks the sticks landing on the balance and beam and just sits there waiting for its victim who isn't who you think it's going to be. And then you don't think you're going to see it. Then you're relieved. You're subconsciously relieved. You're like, oh, I'm not going to actually have to meanwhile, go through that. Meanwhile, there's a potential electrocution. Right, right. Yeah, absolutely. And there's a, a really supportive boyfriend who you know is about to get his soul torn out in front of him, mm-hmm. <laughs> right? Like, so you have this emotional dynamic. And then the way it's paid off is so sudden and so violent. And the the, the screw comes in at 
plays its role like you know it doesn't let you down you know it gives you what you were what you want where you were like i don't want to i can't even look directly at this and like quiet place totally rips this off with the whole nail sequence later on in its existence because it was the same feeling to me with that upturned nail on the stairs mm -hmm. ready to claim the, home, the old foot. home the old home alone yeah the old home alone so anyway i i think this scene is uh is scary and gory and sudden <laughs> It and is, and iconic, it is. What's what's funny is we were talking about like um, like the Invisible Man, how like it keeps you guessing, you keep looking around for everything. Yep. This is sort of like the more severe version of that, <laughs> of that where yeah. where you're not looking for something, but you but you're con you're trying to guess what's going to happen next. Yep. And death is always just like one little thing ahead of you. And I forgot the little touches about it, like the, the, the little shadow that lurks over someone right before it happens, just, yep. just to let you know. Because like, that's how confident I love how death is, uh, how confident death is in Final Destination. He's like, yep. by the way, I'm here. Yep. It's, it's, it, would be, it would be like, I remember one time, I've only played Madden online once, and I'm not good at it. And I remember the guy was like, he was like, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to pass it to this guy. I'm going to get a touchdown. <laughs> and then I was like, no, you're not. And then he did the thing, got a touchdown. And I was like, oh, okay. So you're like really good. He had death's confidence. <laughs> That's totally true. A lot of swagger. He had death's confidence. Um, but rewatching it, the other thing I noticed was just like the physics of mm -hmm. the woman uh, swinging and then falling. Like the, the, the weight. Like you, mm -hmm. you could feel her weight slamming mm -hmm. and it being just heavy enough to just fuck the whole body <laughs> the whole Right, body and up. it's so clever because subconsciously, I think horror fans know that horror directors have a couple choices. If they don't think they're going to be able to pull off an effect, they're going to try to obscure it a little. They're going to put it in mm -hmm. shadow or they're going to put it in a fog or they're going to put it... They, they, you, you don't want a direct, straight, hot HD shot of like a bad effect, right? So you get this huge poof of LeBron style chalk that yeah. happens, like, and you're like, oh, they're gonna sort of hide it from us, and then they don't. No, nope, no, nope. <laughs> it's, it's just it's, what causes her to be like, fuck and this, it's such this a, mountain. because you get like a full on HD shot of this effect, and you think you're not gonna get it. You think it's gonna be like in a cloud, and then it's not. No, and it's, it is like clear it's as such day. a great little master touch of, of uh, perfectly executed. Perfect, perfect. Ten. Yeah, I give it a ten. <laughs> I give, I give that execution <laughs> a ten. A ten out of ten. All right, transition. Coming in at seventy-five, I'm gonna go with "Good Night, Mommy." Mm -hmm. If you put a gun to my head and was like, "Explain this movie," I can't do it. <laughs> it's just a weird movie. <laughs> it's just a weird, scary movie. Good night explanation. Good night. Good night explanation. <laughs> no, so basically, uh, the mom gets some kind of surgery. Her face is very different. I have a feeling massive spoilers are coming, people. All right, and then the two boys are like, that's not our mommy. Spoiler alert, it is the mommy, but there's only one boy, and they end up torturing the mom to death. And I'm going to go with the ending where they give her the old Ari Aster. They do. He somehow got. He's, I love that he. Yeah, good. Somehow for him. he's the flame guy now. Good, yeah, he's he's good. the guy. If you got crunchy corpses good for or him. someone ca catching on fire, it's yeah. Ari. Even though this movie happened, his before, business card should just be like Ari Aster, flame on. Or his card should actually just light you on fire. <laughs> like <laughs> he just you hand it, he just look at you, go Ari That's Aster, business card and then, and then pff, you just you just you know combust. Um, no, I, I I it's funny I put this movie on here because when I first watched it. Like, I remember looking at Alex and being like, I wasn't that impressed by it. Like, it kind of, like, like, I remember it was, like, really unsettling. There was some really cool visuals. And I was like, I remember, like, I didn't, I don't know. But then, like, what's funny, much like Midsummer, the Ari, the old Ari Aster, it, it, it grew on me. Mm -hmm. And then I saw some people talking about it in the group, and I started to get some more appreciation for it. And I rewatched the ending, and I forgot how gruesome her getting lit on fire was. It's bad. Um, in fact, what's funny is to, to steal some thunder from the Ari Aster. I think this burn scene's worse than than uh, Midsummer, uh, just because of the sheer yes. amount of of, of of screaming and and, and pain that you that you hear the mommy go through. Agreed. Um, one thing I didn't notice watching it this time or rewatching it before it, it was funny because it was in the YouTube comments. I never noticed this at the end, but if you if you go back and you watch the scene, they have the scene on YouTube. It's really it's <laughs> it's it's a scene to get through. Um, when the fire department shows up in the bottom left, and they don't try to hide it, 
It's right. very clear. In fact, she actually stands in a bright light. You see the mother's soul, or I don't know if it's her soul. I mean, it's got to be her soul. Um, their representation of a soul. Uh, just walking out, sort of standing in the light, and then just walking off into the woods, mm-hmm. into the darkness. And it's like really, really unsettling. And yep. for some reason, I just didn't notice it the first time. But then watching it the second time, it just upped the creep factor by like 50%. Totally. Once you know that's there, or even if you're subconsciously picking it up, it makes it much scarier. Like, for sure. And it's already a scary scene. Because it's got the Shining Twins thing going on. Yeah. Twins, when they're when they're murderers or they're haunting or whatever, they're always so calm. Yeah. I hate how calm they are in movies. They're just like, we're just, we're just going to get rid of mommy. We're just going to get rid of her. Come away with us forever. Facts. She's going to eat a bug. Forever. Um, and there's a great shot where one of the twins emerges visually behind the other twin that really is just so well done. You know what I'll say about this film too is I have a I, th- I need to re-listen to all these when we're done and like think of all the awards I'm giving these films in my head because this one I will say this I think Goodnight Mommy might have the scariest trailer. It was such good marketing. The trailer was really good. It had that yep. shot where she was in the mirror and then the, the mirror moves and she's looking right at the kid and all that other stuff. It's Weird really... horror movies went on a real run there for a minute. It was it like really The did. Witch. Remember that trailer was terrifying? Mm-hmm. Good Night Mommy, that ter- trailer was terrifying. It Comes at Night was terrifying. <laughs> the trailer was <laughs> Until it wasn't. Uh, right, yeah. I mean, the poster for that was pretty good. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I got to put I got to put that that burn scene on there more so than anything else in the movie just because the way the mom screams she's already fucked up at the end of the movie. Yeah, she <laughs> you just feel terrible. She's you committed. Just feel terrible for her. <laughs> so good night, mommy. I good night, it. Irene. Trans- Transition. All right. So now coming we'll in at seventy four is David Lynch's Inland Empire, two thousand eight. This movie is um terrifying as per usual with david lynch in his kind of off set off putting unusual way um but i'm going with the hallway phantom confrontation end scene so there are scenes on this list that only work in context and there are scenes that that could work totally out of context um this scene's better with context but i have seen this scene shown to people just out of the blue <laughs> where they have no context. They don't even know what movie this is, whatever, just this scene. And they're, they scream so loud. Like that's because, th- and one of the things I like about this is not only so that not only is the phantom terrifying, this is, there's no way to set up this movie. It's basically Lynch horror noir, mm-hmm. like always. But, um, Laura Dern is, is such an incredible, uh, actor. And she, she, you know, brings the usual unbelievable quality to this, but she confronts this phantom, she shoots it, and then you don't know what the hell is happening, but you get this face that has haunted me ever since I've seen it in this scene. Like, it's a very unsettling, it's a distorted face. When you, It turns out when you distort a face visually and kind of curve it, all the teeth look like fangs, which gives it like that London after midnight, Lon Chaney kind of like mm-hmm. look and feel, but neoned up like Andy Warhol's Lon Chaney <laughs> like looking thing. It's terrifying. But the thing I really like about it is the first terrifying st- is is a combination. It's the Phantom's face combined with Laura Dern's face. That's the first thing you see. I didn't know that. He literally took Laura Dern's face and transposed it over that the, the villain's face. And that's the thing that is is the first nightmare haunting nightmare fuel visual and you you know there's a lot of it's a horror dynamic that's pretty common right like you you get to sort of identify like you know that at some point nancy and freddy krueger sort of identify with each other after the whole saga and everything that we've mm-hmm. gone through by the time you get the new nightmare they're there's they're more way more you together like visually than not right right and david lynch is like well when horror is doing that like metaphorically i'll just do it i'll just do it visually i'll I'll take the villain and the hero bam i'll give and let's see what it looks like holy shit it looks terrifying is what it looks it it looks it looks really unnerving in fact it kind of reminded me of like early like 2005 no like 2004 like 
scary internet videos where mm -hmm. like people would just put like these really scary images mm -hmm. and then like a, a scary face with a loud noise yep. and it's like yep. something's in your friend like, yep. it kind of felt like that it but did. like you had someone like super artsy like david lynch doing it so you're like <laughs> you're, like i'm getting that weirdness that scared me back in the day but like this is supposed to have a lot of purpose behind it <laughs> so it's like it's like i feel i feel a little classy getting scared <laughs> around this one yeah it's the, it's the black tie version of of that kind of scare, and and the other thing that's really cool about this is you have, you have the idea of the the what the oozing weirdness that happens next, the gunshot. I feel like that's probably how gunshots really feel. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like whatever's happening on the screen that you're seeing there. So like it it it, it draws you. It that, that's one of the magic things about David Lynch is he's so weird and unusual and like whatever, but he's also so strangely accessible. Yeah, it's kind of like someone put their arm around your shoulder and they're like, "You want to know something cool? Let me let me show you what a gunshot feels like." And then he just does it. You're then like, he makes Ew, that face. but like, <laughs> then he makes that face. And he just scares. <laughs> so yeah, I, I I love the movie. It's it's it starts terrifying, um, and it's it gets pretty horror, a lot of noir. But like this scene has stayed with me ever since I've seen it. Well, when you were showing it to me, I was like, I was like, this scene's not scary. Mm -hmm. Like, because when the Phantom shows up, he just looks like this dork, right? right. And I'm like, the fuck. <laughs> <laughs> this, this ain't scary. Right. This looks like this looks like you know your landlord telling you rent's dope. You know, and then all of a sudden he gets shot, and then he turns into whatever the hell that thing, <laughs> the, whatever that is. is that right. Well, I don't know if you heard yourself, but it was the so we watch all the scenes before the podcast, like we do for this, these episodes. We watch them right before just to to have them really fresh when we're going in to talk about them. And w when we were watching any of the other ones, like the Oculus one made you like made you jump. Like but like when the Phantom showed up, this, you were literally like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> That's all you said. <laughs> Jesus <laughs> Christ. And it was so flat. It was like, <laughs> I think I had a very appropriate response to the hallway Phantom, which is, this is the effect you're looking for when you, when you're sitting there watching a scary movie with someone. Like, sometimes you may want them to jump. And sometimes you just want them to be like, what the fuck? Jesus Christ. <laughs> right, <so. laughs> Transition. Coming in at number Seventy-two. This is a Shutter original. It, it is. It is rock and roll. I mean, as they go, I don't know how that process works exactly. Yeah, it's, like they make the movies and they buy them. Right, 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 exactly, right. right. But I, it was released through Shutter, Shutter, and Shutter did all the marketing for it that I saw. And that is how we watched it. And that movie being Revenge. Mm -hmm. uh, is this 2018. This feels recent. It was, it was very recent. I yeah. think it was like, it was, you know what, that's, that's the hard part with like with those films because like they make them and then like someone like Shudder buys them and, but like they made them like 2017. And right. Like, Shudder's been released until like 2018. Right. And so Plus it's like, this year has felt like 20 years long. This so. year, right. uh, I've aged 7,000 years. <laughs> right. So. I, am, I look like Gary Oldman's Dracula <laughs> with the hair and shit. That's how long this year's, this year's been. Um, but I'm going to go with, uh, I'm going to call it the ayahuasca cave scene. Uh, self care scene. Self, the self, the, the, <laughs> the self revenge self care scene. Care scene. So revenge is uh, about a woman getting revenge yes. over some you know you know greasy assholes. Yes, and and like it's it's a technicolor like masterpiece. This this is a bright movie. Yeah. This is a this is probably you know I'm gonna have an award for every film tonight. This is <laughs> good. This uh, <laughs> drum roll please. Uh, this film gets the brightest. Film award. Yep. Um, also, so like life made me gag. Oculus scene made me hold my mouth open. This Revenge was the first movie in probably like I don't know, eight years, ten years that I that, that had gore that made me wince. And like like effective, effective, effective gore. So there, there's a few scenes. There's one where. Uh, our lady gets pushed off and she falls like Selena Kyle, Batman fucking return style, dude, onto a tree branch, gets impaled, yep. and then she like passes out, wakes up, she's still got the thing through there. Then she goes to the cave, gets the branch out, and then has this big gaping wound in there. And the only way she can do it is to cauterize, cauterize the wound yep. with a with a beer can, which is gonna give her like the most badass Phoenix <laughs> tattoo in the in yep. the world. But the whole scene. It just plays really weird because it's not like, you know, uh, was, was 127 hours where like 
uh, James Franco just has to like suck it up and like take it. Like it's really trippy because they um, it, it, earlier in the film they talk about they have I believe it's ayahuasca and they're like just a just, you know just a little bit of that will like make you trip balls. And she's looking at her condition. She goes, I'm going to need a little more. So she just downs, like, the ayahuasca. Or was it, is it ayahuasca or mushrooms or something? Some uh, kind she of, takes a lifetime supply. A lifetime whatever, supply whatever of something. Drug. It was some kind of, like, dry herb. And she just, like, starts noshing on it. And then all of a sudden, it's like, it's almost like Hagazusa ending, you know, crazy, uh, I don't know weird time is slowed down kind of feeling yeah like the 2001 space sequence of horror yeah and she's like kind of able to like examine her wounds like with like a more like clear conscience like oh well that don't that don't (laughs) that don't look right (laughs) that don't look right well only someone who was tripping balls would conceive of that way of healing themselves yeah because the pain dude it is like should be accompanying that it is (laughs) <laughs> it is out of this world, and it is it's it's such a fun like, not a fun scene to watch. I mean, it's pretty goddamn goddamn painful. But like, it just it works on so many levels. Where like a lot of movies, like the closest thing I can think of, we were just talking about the, the director when it comes to effective gore is the guy who does who did Green Room. Yep. Other than that, you know, Ari Aster stuff is weird. Um, uh, Jordan Peele doesn't have like a lot of like gory stuff, but like those two those two people right there. Like they can make body parts look like they hurt, make body parts hurt again. It's <laughs> exactly right, and it's so it's so mythically cool for her character, right? Mm-hmm. Because because she, I mean, she gets penetrated by this tree, and yeah. then she closes it forever, and that revenge is perfectly in line with what her story is about and where she's going, and it's not like too heavy-handed the symbolism is right is so it the phoenix is a perfect choice and the visual is so great and then you're like you realize that you're on board with a new like a new hero like a legitimate hero it's got like a rambo kind of feeling it's it's an amazing like a first blood rambo type feeling none of that nonsense afterwards it's amazing movie (laughs) very grounded love it all right transition all right at 71, I am uh, bringing a, this is movie, a, funny, this is a, fun a movie that no one would expect. Uh, or the scene that you'd expect. Or the scene you'd expect. True. Uh, Coen Brothers' Buster Scruggs. I'm going with the ending scene of Meal Ticket. All right. All right, people. Well, listen, listen. <laughs> Huddle up. Huddle right, up. Exactly. We got to talk about this. <laughs> Go with me on this for a minute. So Liam Neeson is a national treasure. Mm-hmm. He's just an incredible actor. He's one of those actors, though, that it's like it's when you go back and you look at you know, Jimmy Stewart movies and you're like, what were you thinking? Why would you make those six movies? Like, whatever. He can go through stretches where, uh, like, if I, I'm... Everything feels like the commuter part four to me, <laughs> like, when yeah. he does some of these things, right? But when he is on his game and he, like, there is nothing. I don't know what it is. I don't know where his charisma comes from, but it's so good. And he is so sinister in this scene. And the thing that I love about it is the symbolism is so subtle but great, right? So there's a, a guy who, who has no arms, no legs. It's like we're back to Todd Browning's freaks with the torsos, mm-hmm. whatever. And he's going with Liam Neeson town to town. They're performing. He's performing. They're 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 getting money. It's the old west. It's like brutal. It's it's tr- terrible. No one should be doing this. It's like elephant man territory, right? Mm-hmm. And then Liam Neeson replaces this guy with a chicken that could do math. <laughs> and they're just going in this like horse drawn carriage, and they stop and. Now, Liam Neeson has to care for, feed, medically take care of, like, the, uh, whoever's performing for him, right? He's obviously done the calculation in his head that the chicken's going to be more cost-effective. Mm-hmm. He stops the carriage, the, the whatever. He gets out. He goes over this bridge. It's this cold, beautiful shot, day, fall, like, at, like, Revenant-style looking background. Mm-hmm. And he picks up this boulder that is suspiciously the same sort of weight the guy in the carriage would be and shape and throws it into the river and it just sinks without a trace and then he just comes walking back around the corner to the carriage and the guy in the carriage is looking at him and he's looking at the guy and he puts his arms behind his back which i think is particularly evil to do (laughs) considering who he's just walking like i'm not a threat but he gets this smile 
Liam Neeson gets this smile, and it is the most sinister moment. I know this is not a horror movie, but it, is, it was one of the most sinister moments of the year, or whatever movie this, whatever year this movie came out. Um, and it was, it was just, it gave me chills down to the bone, knowing that it was just an economic decision. And he was basically giving like the "it's only business, not personal" <laughs> look, and and the uh, and the guy in the garage is giving him the "are you kidding me?" <laughs> look. And it's just terrifying. And then it goes to this cold, empty shot of just the chicken in the garage. But the thing is, you can't throw the chicken down into the water, right? Because the chicken would just fly or flap or like whatever. Mm -hmm. Because the chicken has limbs. No. This guy doesn't have limbs. The chicken has limbs. When Liam Neeson's walking towards him, it looks like he doesn't have arms. There is such a fucked up visual code thing happening in this scene that it makes it even more terrifying subconsciously. Anyway. Terrifying scene, heartbreaking scene, but I'm giving it for Liam Neeson, who should be a, a horror icon and isn't for some reason, but he should have been. I wish he had come more to the dark side, but when he does it right, there's nothing like him. Coen Brothers can do some really fucked up things. <laughs> yes, they can. Like, have yes, they, they done? Well, they did. They did. Um, what's the closest thing to like a straight up horror movie they did? Um, oh my God. I know they have like one. Well, the, I mean, the. the to me, the straight the, the if you're not counting No Country for Old Men because it's arguably supernatural what's happening in there considering the ending, yeah. right? Um, then Blood Simple is their first movie. It's a really brutal noir, mm -hmm. but it's probably the thing that the horror fans would feel most in sync with that, gotcha. I, can, that I can think of. There's something, but like they do dark shit all the time. And Miller's Crossing has a lot of evil parts in it, and they do a lot of. Uh, dark stuff when they're not doing comedy <laughs> well i like that scene and it i i keep i kind of want to rewatch the whole movie it's been a while because i really love the ending when they're in like the carriage going to the underworld or hell or whatever right that's all, that's a twilight zone feel for sure but um what's funny is is this scene kind of reminds me of what you said about oculus just a few minutes ago like when you hear the noise like you 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 know how to feel and when he throws the rock over, you hear like the plunge and the, the water splashing noise you make, and you know it's going to be the exact same goddamn noise when he throws Junior off the. You off do, the, um, and you know he's not going to make a sound because he he only talks when he performs. He never talks at any other point in the segment. And in, in, if he's not performing, he's not talking. It's a very strange, spooky. That's like, an ice cold scene. like world you're in. <laughs> Well, I'm glad we're ending this batch on a on a on a high note. <laughs> That's like super sad. Or a low note. It's like super sad and <laughs> depressing. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Poor guy. I feel bad. Hey, the oh. high note is Liam Neeson is a treasure. And anytime he does something that that is dark themed or like whatever. I mean, I loved a dark man and I can't believe that's the same person. I mean, he's been around so long. Not Sam Raimi? It was. See, we found a way. We found to, a way to make them. We found a way. Make them in here twice. Found a way. All right. Well, that's the next batch. We we're, we got through the seventies. Yeah, join us for the sixties. We're excited to head towards the top half of this list. I know the top half is where like like this is the fun part of the Bravo list where it's like oh the picks you wouldn't expect, but then like I think horror fans are going to start to know like where this list is shaping up. Like, right. Like much how we did when we were like okay they're going to show Alien, they're going to show Texas Chainsaw Massacre, they're going to show Jaws. Right. I'm right. I'm curious to see like. Right. If you know, guess our yeah, guess one. yeah, guess our top what? Guess any of our top ten. Guess our top ten. So 2008 to 2020 scariest movie moments. Most of them are horror movies. Yeah, but you know, if it's a dark thriller, it's it's eligible. Let us know in an iTunes comment. Just review. like seven was on Bravo's, right? Very true. Very true. Well, let us know in a comment. Until next time, stay scary. Watch a shit ton of horror movies, and we will see you with the next ten. Happy October. Bye bye. bye.